You know, one of the big uh, side stories from the Dallas Cowboy win yesterday, 24-20, over the Lions, was my main man. Celebrating as any Cowboy fan would if given the opportunity to celebrate in the box with Jerry Jones and in the locker room and on the way home. And he's on the line right now, the governor of New Jersey, Governor Chris Christie. Uh, first, Happy New Year. Secondly, congratulations on your big Cowboy win. Well, thank you, Craig. Boomer, good morning. How are you? Doing great. So, <laughs> so first and foremost, uh, let's get your take on it. A horrendous pickup of the flag on the non-interference call, correct? Uh, no, incorrect. <laughs> hey, hey, Gov, what, what's the deal with the red sweater these days? First of all, the sweater is orange, first off. It looks red on it TV. It looks red on TV. Uh, right. I know, I know. I've heard right, well, well, the What's the orange sweater? I'm thinking pumpkin. What, I mean, what are we doing well, here? Listen, here's the thing. It, 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 the first Cowboy game I went to this year, um, I, I wore the orange sweater just because that's what I picked to wear that evening. Right. And um, as it turns out, uh, you know, there are some people in the in the, my universe who believe that that then becomes a good luck thing. Okay. And I've worn it to every Cowboys game I've been to this year, and that was my fifth one last night. And um, and, and they've won all five. So you are so the up, the orange sweater. The, the orange sweater is now a perfect five and zero with Cowboy games. My perfect five and zero. Yes. Yeah, and one of those games was uh, the game against the Giants, right? At least one. Correct. All right, yep. and then, of course, they're undefeated on the road. But don't tell me, as big a fan as you are, that that's a good non-call on the pass interference. Come on. Oh, Craig, listen, I, you know, there were a lot of very interesting calls last night. I don't think that crew was, was a fabulous crew um, last night. I think there were a lot of bad calls that went on. And um, what are you going to do? Uh, I, I think uh, the game played out the way it played out. I uh -huh. think the better team won. And, uh we move on to Green Bay. Now, there are there are those that feel that Jerry Jones, quote-unquote, dissed you. When you went in for the high five, he turned, I guess, to maybe his son or son-in-law, did the hug, and then you guys did the group hug. At any point, yeah. do you feel as though your high five was not embraced by Jerry Jones? It was pandemonium in there, uh, Craig. I, I, it's difficult to describe the level of intensity in the Jones box during these games. And so... No, uh, believe me, I'm sitting in Jerry Jones' box. How do I feel dissed? Exactly. I mean, you know, here's the thing I would say. You know, let's act like we've been there before. <laughs> he hadn't been you know, there before. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, they, Boomer, have, they, won, they won Super Bowl titles in the 90s. Come on, you guys have been there. Boomer, it's been a long time, man. That's like saying the Mets have been there before. Listen, all I can tell you, all I can tell you Chris, if is I'm, that. When I'm in, listen, Boomer, if I'm in Fred Wilpon's box and the Mets mm. get into the playoffs yes. or the playoff game, I'm, I'm, I'm hugging everything in sight. I'm hugging the people serving us the drink. I'm hugging everybody. All, all I know is this, uh, you wear the orange sweater. Yeah, all I care about is the Rangers right now, and they're playing their asses <laughs> off. You know, I'll, even, I'll tell you what. Don't wear the orange sweater to the Ranger game. I, I don't need to see an orange sweater at the <laughs> Ranger might. game. He's no, undefeated. A, a blue sweater is fine because, you know, we are the blue shirts after all. But well, I, listen, and you know how passionate I am about the Rangers. Yes, I do know that. And I get Devils fans to get angry with me and Flyers fans to get angry with me about being a Rangers fan. It's just, Everybody it's, gets angry. I, I don't know. Just hugging Jerry Jones is just so, like, I don't know, creepy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, if, you're, if you're not a Cowboys fan, I completely understand that. Now, you've I been a, I don't that. hate it. By the way, hey, Chris, I, I'm not a fan of any particular team in the NFL, even the teams that I play for. I'm a fan of people in the NFL. So the one thing I will say this, I am a fan of Tony Romo. Right. And I was yep. really, really happy for him at the end of the game that he was able to pull it out late in the game. I felt bad for Matthew Stafford because, you know, he had a couple fumbles there at the end. And your man, Demarcus Lawrence, I, I can't even imagine how he must have felt. Because I was just telling Craig, after he fumbles the ball that he picks oh. up, right, the next six or seven plays, however many plays there was, that guy was like shot out of a cannon. And then, fortunately enough for him, he gets the uh, the final sack and fumble to end the game uh, so your Cowboys can win it. So I'm sure that it was craziness down there and everything else. But uh, for Tony Romo, I was happy. Well, listen, I was incredibly happy for Tony Romo. Also, he's a really good guy, and and you know I think he's taken a lot of abuse over the years. But uh, you know the fact is, 
he's he's a very clutch player, and he was incredibly clutch. It took a lot of abuse, physical abuse last night. They batted him around pretty badly. Now, when uh, when Lawrence uh, turns the ball back over and the Lions have a second shot at it, be honest. At that point, are you saying, "Oh my God, here we go, we're going to lose this"? Oh, I was very very worried at that point. Yeah, I, I was worried then. Um, I was worried when we got the interception at the uh, beginning of the second half and could put the points on the board. He Dan Bailey's been practically automatic this year, and he misses that field goal. So right. there were a number of points in that game yesterday where I was beginning to think this just may not be our day. Uh, but, you know, the fact is that the team hung in there. The defense played great in the second half, and uh, they, they gave the offense a chance to win the game, and the offense came back and won it at the end. Let's look at big picture here for a second there, uh, Mr. Governor. Uh, you think we can carry Texas now if we're running for president? <laughs> you got all well, the millions you need. <laughs> let's just say this boomer, I think our chances have improved. It's funny, though, to, to watch all these people. You guys know me for a long time. And, and, you know, I've been a Cowboys fan the whole time. And when the Cowboys are losing the last game of the year, the last three seasons, not to make the playoffs, there's nobody getting on social media giving me a hard time about being a Cowboys fan. So right. we all know what this is about. And, and that's fine. It's great. And, and believe me, I would take all the abuse that I'm taking from some of these folks in return for Cowboys playoff wins. Hey, listen, fan, you, all about. you'll take a Super Bowl win and all the nonsense on Twitter that you can have. Hey, I, I know one thing. I'm not going to see you uh, propping on a Cubs hat anytime soon. I know that for a oh, fact. Oh, stop. Yeah, forget about it. <laughs> you, you, you are who you are as a fan. And, you know, when I walk into the Prudential Center during the playoffs two year, a couple of years ago, Boomer, yep. when the Devils are playing the Rangers, and I have, you know, Devils fans screaming and cursing at me because I'm a Rangers fan. <laughs> That's the way it goes. People are passionate. That's you know, passionate. I know exactly how you feel, Gov, because I called out the Islander fans for not selling out the building. Oh, they... Now, I wasn't calling out the hardcore Islander fans that love their Islanders. I was talking about the average fan that should go see the best team in hockey right now. And, yep. uh, boy, I go, but I catch hell. Holy God. But now the good news is that the Islanders are finally selling out. They got a good team. Their fan base is energized, and they have a little nostalgia going on. Yeah, so I can understand your pain when it comes to stuff like this because people take their fandom extremely, extremely seriously. Yeah, as do I. And so, you know, what I've said, you know, to folks down in Philadelphia is I, I love passionate Eagles fans. That's great. I'm glad they're rooting hard for their team. But, uh, you know, just because I'm governor of New Jersey doesn't mean that I change who I root for. That's it. That's and what I said. I, who cares? He's a legit fan. He acted like a normal human being who just happened to be in the owner's box celebrating with him. And then the, the, the vision of you walking on a cloud of air into the Cowboy locker room to celebrate. When you walk in the locker room, describe the scene for us because no one else gets that chance. Who's the first person you see and who got the Chrissy hug? Well, the, 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 I got the you know the first time I walked in with uh, with Jerry and and uh, I turned around and the first person who grabbed me was Des Bryant. Des Bryant. Uh, <laughs> Des Bryant. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Now, does he think you're one of the owners? Does he know who you are? He, he, Des knows exactly who I am. Yes. See, look you at know, that. listen, it's it's five games in a row here, you know, Craig, and uh, and the, the scene in the locker room was of of just. Really, really unbridled joy among the players. They were they were exhausted. They were thrilled at the win, uh, and everybody was very happy. Jason Garrett was, <coughs> excuse me, as I've seen him, you know, all the way through his career, just extraordinary with the players, and, and had a great talk after the game. And uh, they're, they're they're getting ready for Green. I don't know how Jason Garrett does it. I really don't. He comes off great uh, in terms of all these press conferences, whether they win or they lose. He doesn't change very much. I know yesterday he was extremely happy and proud of the way that his team uh, performed in the fourth quarter. Uh, interesting thing enough, a couple other questions for me, uh, Mr. Governor. Uh, first of all, are you going to Lambeau this weekend? I hope to. Now, ah. the second thing is, well, I'll tell you what, the governor gets paid a lot of money to be able to do all these things, huh? Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Boomer, easy now, Boomer. <laughs> Just want to make sure how all this stuff is going down. That's all. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Just want to make yeah, sure well. that my gov's clean, you know, so. Uh, you hate New course. Jersey. Yes. What do you mean? I don't well, hate New Jersey. All of a sudden, he's your governor. <clears throat> well, he's my buddy. He, he's, he's our third base. But, by the way, Rex Ryan sent me a text. He said he owns third base because there are things that you can't do. He's a little bit better hitter than you are. He did say that. Well, listen, I understand, and Rex and I are, Rex and I are good friends, so, 
you know, we should share third base. That's fine by well, me. Well, it depends where Rex winds up. I'm just flying in for boomerang cart and softball games. So you are now the official full-time. You're, you're like uh, like Headley of the Yankees. It's your oh, yeah. game now to lose. Did you uh, did well, you reach out to Rex after he uh, got fired? Yes, yeah, sure, of course. And what, I, I, I reached out to him as well. I'm like, like, what do you say to a guy like that in that situation? I said to him, uh, I'm proud of the job you did here. You're a great guy, and better days are ahead. Uh, I wrote the same thing. He didn't respond. It's fascinating. Well, that's because he doesn't <laughs> consider you a friend, I guess. Right? I suppose I sent him a nice text, you know, wishing him well, saying that, you know, the governor's now my full-time third baseman. If he comes back, he'd have to DH. And I got nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing in return. Very well, upset he, about he, it. So, so, so Woody fired him, and you fired him on the same day. What do you, how do you expect him to react? Well, I mean, listen, he's going to wind up in Atlanta. He can't, well, he can't be on my softball team, <laughs> and I'm giving you the job. So, you, you know, you better get yourself ready for that. Absolutely. I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to assume the duties. But uh, if my friend Rex comes back, I'm happy to share time with him. And, you know, with Boomer running the team, he'll be rotating players in and out of there like nobody's well, business to anyway. Be, to another, another Try to question. get whatever edge he can. Right. No question I have for you going to Lambo this weekend. Are you going to hang out with Scott Walker at all, or is it just going to be you and Jerry Jones? Oh, well, listen, if I, if, if I do go to, to Lambo this weekend, of course, Scott and I are friends, and I'll see Scott. He's friends with everybody. He Who's friends not friends? Him. I right. want to just uh, real quick be serious for one second with you uh, as we talk to Governor Clay. There is, uh, you know, this, you know, as they lay to rest, um, you know, both uh, New York uh, City police officers after that uh, heinous, um, what amounts to, uh, you know, execution a few weeks back, you know, the Stephen Siller Turn at the Towers Foundation stepped up, and I know you're very supportive of what those guys do, and uh, their goal was to raise enough money to pay off the mortgages of both police officers' homes, and I'm very, very proud to say that they did it. In less than a week, they raised the $800,000 necessary to pay off the mortgages of both officers' homes. I should also mention that, you know, the George Steinbrenner uh, Fund, Silver Shield Silver Foundation, Shield Foundation right? which has been around for more than 30 years, they've already uh, uh, agreed to pay all educational costs for the children of both officers. And I know uh, it was near and dear to your heart, Chris, so just to be serious for a minute, um, I just want to give, pay a little homage to the officers and to the, uh, you know, the Tunnel to Towers Foundation for doing what they did. Well, first off, uh, to the, you know, and I said this immediately afterwards, you know, there's all kinds of discussions about things surrounding um, these murders um, that are public policy type issues that people want and need to discuss. But, you know, I was urging people, let's take a deep breath and think about these families. I mean, these are families that lost their husbands and their fathers right before Christmas and who'll be gone forever now. And, I, and so first to those families, you know, we have to have them in our prayers every day because this will be a story that, unfortunately, given the way things work in our, in our society, the story will fade away over time. But the loss for those families will never fade away. And to the charities who have done what they've done, uh, this is the kind of thing that you step up and do for heroes. And those, and, and those police officers are heroes, gave their lives in protecting New York City. And I'm so gratified that you have people who are leaders of those charities who saw it as something that needed to be done and went out and actually got it done. Didn't just give it lip service, got it done. And that's extraordinary, but it's the least that can be done. Families who are going to be without those people now for the rest of their lives, that's a loss that none of us can really completely understand unless we've been through it. You know, Governor, you have an opportunity to talk in front of a microphone every single day, and you get asked a million questions in regard to stuff like this. How careful are you with your rhetoric in situations like this, and how has the explosive political rhetoric exacerbated the problems for the police, not only here in New York City, but all across the country? Well, uh, you know, I think you have an obligation as a public official to be very careful about this because, you know, this, this affects lives every day, the lives of the people on the police force, the lives, no matter where you are in the country, and the lives of the people that they're trying to protect. And so you have to be very, very careful about it. And, and I do think that um, the rhetoric has been way overheated um, in a number of different areas. And, and the fact is we need to be more thoughtful about this than reactive. And, uh, and that's what I've tried to do with my own comments about it. And having spent seven years in law enforcement as a prosecutor, you know, I, I saw every day the way, in that case, federal agents and, and local police officers put their lives on the line. And uh, you have to have great respect for that and, and also great respect in the way you talk about it publicly as a public official. If, as you say, Boomer, you do have the microphone available to you every day. 
Talking to uh, Governor Christie of New Jersey, uh, one more question in regards to this. Uh, do you blame the NYPD and all those police officers that turned their back on Mayor de Blasio? It's a very, very emotional thing, Boomer, um, for, for all the folks who are involved. I, you know, I absolutely believe that you need to have respect for the office um, that people hold. That's part of keeping our civil society together. But you can also understand some very emotional reactions from folks who believe that uh, they weren't served correctly. So, you know, this is a very, very tough one and, and one that I think, in the end, cooler heads have to prevail on both sides for people to understand and respect the roles that each play in making sure that we have a peaceful and civilized society, which is what people want and expect from everybody who serves in government. Well said. Over a million dollars been raised so far between the Mayor's Fund to Advance New York City that Mayor Bloomberg started uh, after Hurricane Sandy uh, and, of course, uh, this uh, great uh, uh, Tunnels to Tower Foundation has raised the money to pay off uh, both officers' homes, plus the George Steinbrenner Silver Shield Foundation has declared it would cover the educational costs of uh, the Lou and Ramos uh, children uh, wherever they, uh, life takes them. Governor, always good talking to you. Uh, good luck to your Cowboys along the way in that orange sweater. Thanks for the time, and, uh, and, and be well, okay? Boomer, why are you laughing about the orange sweater? Uh, no, 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 I just like the sweater. Yeah, you know, laughing about the sweater, Boomer. I mean, you, you, am I to know that you, Boomer Sison, as a player, never had any superstitions or as a fan? I've never had any superstitions. Well, I do, but, I, you know, I, like I put, like, when we get into the playoffs, you know, there's for the hockey teams, you know, whoever we're playing, I'll put certain jerseys in the freezer. <laughs> right. So, so and, that's and, what and I you're do, laughing yes. at me. You put jerseys <laughs> in the freezer, and you're laughing at me. Uh, I, you, I love that, Boomer. You know, don't, don't you have, like, great hand... self-awareness. Gov, here's why I love you, because I, I know that, you know, when you play third base for us, it doesn't matter. You, you're all in. You're all out there. And you don't care. It doesn't matter what it looks like or anything. And as a matter of fact, it was really amazingly successful. The point being, don't you have handlers? Don't guys like you have handlers around you? Who say, don't wear that sweater? Yes. Yes. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> not. I want to see my man in a blue shirt with a red tie, and I want him to look presidential. He's at a boomer. I'm at a boomer. I'm at a football I know, game. I know, I know. I don't know. You know. <laughs> By the end, Chris, you have I've to remember, Boomer it. wears a jacket and a tie to talk about football the last 15 years. He doesn't know any better. Boomer, I have plenty of people who try to give me advice on some of this stuff all the time. And what I tell them is, if it has to do with my official duties, I'm happy to take your advice. I don't need advice on how to root for the Dallas Cowboys. I've been doing this for 43 years. And, and what makes me laugh about some of the people who get really upset about it is, you know, we, we haven't had a heck of a lot of success for a long time as Cowboys fans. So what are they angry at me for? You know, I mean, listen, there's nobody yelling at me when we're, when we're losing to the Giants in the last game of the season and miss the playoffs. They're losing to the Redskins in the last game of the season in the playoffs. And nobody was yelling at me when Kyle Orton threw that awful interception last year to lose to the Eagles at home for the last game of the year to make the playoffs. So... Uh, you know, I'm not listening to any of these people who give me a hard time now that we're having a little bit of success. Well, you put it that way, you shouldn't listen to me either then. There Enjoy <laughs> Green Bay. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. But good talking to you. All right. Uh, there you go, Governor Chris Christie.